Hey everybody, Nick Espinosa, your chief security fanatic here, and today we are actually talking about simply automation. How do we deal with growing unemployment thanks to that phenomena? Some new news just came to light, which is really sparking my interest in this once again. I've talked about this before, but I think we have a situation going on that we need to address. Now, here's what's going on as a backdrop to this video slash podcast. This is coming from a local news source, Fox 5 New York. Now, here's what's going on. McDonald's has entered into a strategic partnership with IBM in an effort to accelerate the development of automated drive through lanes. We actually have some of that here in Chicago, the rather the Chicagoland area, as they are piloting that. Now, under this agreement, IBM will acquire McD Tech Labs, which has been working to develop, test, and deploy an automated ordering system using artificial intelligence enabled voice recognition. That's I've actually seen that in action again here in uh, here in my home city. Now, McD Tech Labs was created following the uh, basically the fast foods uh, acquisition, the fast food chain's acquisition of Apprente in 2019. The transaction is expected to close in December obviously subject to regulatory approvals and other customary closing conditions by the federal government. But upon closing, the McD Tech Labs team would become part of IBM's cloud and cognitive software division. So think about it this way. And I did my homework on this. From 2012, I looked these up. This is per Statista. Um, I believe that's how you pronounce that website. Um, or status, Statistica or whatever it's called. But you know what I'm talking about. You've, you've probably been there yourself at some point looking things up. From 2012 to 2020... McDonald's went from having 440,000 employees to 200,000. Was it shrinking? No. McDonald's operates and franchised a total of 39,198 restaurants worldwide in 2020, and this figure has been a year-on-year -year increase for the last 16 years, meaning they are adding stores every single year, year over year, for almost two decades, and they are continuing to lower their employee population. That means employment is essentially lowering even though locations are increasing. And so the question then becomes, why is this? First, things like continuous improvement in processes uh, basically at each location is the one, meaning do you have a more effective way to use less employees to do the same amount of work? And there you go. Now you are saving costs by making them more efficient, but automation is the other. There are a lot of different technologies that are integrated into a McDonald's right now in turn, including like automatic timers, the, you know, things that will you know cook things for you automatically and all of that. And so there's a lot less manual labor than McDonald's has ever needed in in the entire history of the corporation. We're not yet to the point where automation is running a McDonald's entirely, but McDonald's is a bellwether here because it's coming sooner than you think and not just to the restaurant uh, industry. So the question is, how do we get workers experience as McDonald's is known as one of those uh, corporations that will employ unskilled workers to basically train them? A lot of people had their very first job at a McDonald's to basically get them into better, higher paying jobs, develop those skills. But if you are you know, 16 years old or whatever, and can't get a job because of automation, then what? And as automation grows, so does unemployment. And this basically is, is a problem that we're going to have worldwide, especially as we're, we're driving this here home in the United States. And multiple verticals have to deal with it, not just the restaurant industry or the fast food industry. Trucking and logistics, as we have these self-driving cars and trucks that are coming out in, let's say, the next decade or two, then the need to have, let's say, qualified truck drivers goes down. The logistics can be handled through automation. Blockchain, blockchain technology is something that IBM is developing for trucking and logistics as well is one of those things. You're going to have less humans involved in basically moving things from point A to point B than we've ever had. Healthcare has automation. As we have basically devices that are more sophisticated, we're seeing artificial intelligence now attempting to do surgery. That is coming for healthcare. There's a benefit in the sense that maybe artificial intelligence, robotics, and automation can take the place of an actual doctor in areas where doctors are scarce. But then what happens, you know, as we are actually training doctors, the population goes down, as does nurses, as, do, as does all of the other logistics that hospitals need as the automation continues. IT and cybersecurity isn't immune either. 
We are integrating things like machine and deep learning into threat intelligence and detection so we don't have to sift through logging anymore. Yeah, we can let the AI do it and then alert a human, but at some point it may not have to alert a human as we work on self-remediation and on and on and on. This is a problem that we have coming at us and there's a lot of different potential solutions for this. The one thing that I don't think we're gonna see is a decrease in the overall population of humanity in general. We're not gonna stop having kids and so what do we do with that? And, and that is, I think, one of those things where we are looking at things like uni universal basic income. It's not because people don't want to work. It's because they can't find the jobs or they don't have the experience or they're not skilled enough or they went into a field that seemed safe at the time, but eventually got replaced with automation or simply fell by the wayside. And we've seen situations like this happen throughout the years. So when essentially the, the oil lamps that were running in cities like London basically switched to electricity, there were outcries basically by the people, the, the, the men that actually went in and filled those lamps every night because the lamp lighters were essentially out of business. And here we are. The problem that we have, though, is that because we are moving at such a fast pace compared to the slow trend of oil lamp versus electricity back in the day, which was a massive jump, but it was one jump, and we are seeing massive jumps happen with more frequency, less distance in between them that are directly impacting the population. And so retraining, re-education of, you know, different skills and all of that to, let's say, feed the automation, support the automation, go into an entirely different field is one thing. Universal basic income is another, uh, you know, that I think really needs to have an honest debate about it. Not, not from the guise of the political divide of, oh my God, we absolutely need to socialize everything or socialism is the root of all evil. Having an honest discussion about, okay, if that doesn't work, what are we going to do with the millions, soon to be potentially billions of people that simply can't find a job because technology was much cheaper to deploy and therefore here we are. This is an issue that labor unions are dealing with worldwide, as well as everybody else. And as McDonald's has cut their employee population in more than half in basically the last eight years, while vastly increasing the number of stores by thousands every year, we have a problem. And McDonald's is the bellwether for that. So I'm going to leave it there. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. This is not an easy topic by any stretch of the imagination to deal with, but I'd love to have an honest conversation with honest ideas, even if you know we agree. We can be opponents uh, and we can be we can disagree, but we don't have to be enemies. And I think that's oftentimes lost, uh, you know, in today's political rhetoric. But that is your news of the day. I hope everybody has a great weekend. And please like, share, follow me here on Facebook and Twitter at Nick A E S P. And please feel free to subscribe to me at YouTube as well. And as always, stay safe, stay online, and please stay private. Thanks, everyone.